Has ComC just kind of given up on its eBay live auctions? It's really changed a lot and it seems I'm putting a lot less time into it. Let's discuss this. If you've been following this channel, you'll notice that there was a period of time when I was making a lot of videos about this because I was making a lot of money. Part of the reason I was making a lot of money is because these it was a new thing, you know, and I think when, when the eBay live auction started, there was a lot of people in that space that maybe are not so familiar with what a realistic price should be for certain sports cards. And some of those cards were getting bid up wildly crazy. I mean, I was selling $5 cards for $25. I was selling $10 cards for $30. This was a, a regular occurrence. I mean, occasionally there would be a card that was like a, you know, $10 card that would slip through the cracks and sell for 99 cents. That would happen too. But by and large, I was making these heavy profits and I was making some videos about like why. And I, I made a number of videos about the kind of psychology that I was perceiving that was happening that was causing this to happen. But then, you know, gradually this kind of cooled off a little bit, but I was still able to find a lot of, uh, a lot of cards that would do very well. It's a different type of card that would do well in a, in a live auction than in, in a regular auction or in a buy it now. There's kind of different types of cards that do well, that do better in each of those. And I was learning a lot about that. ComC was also making a lot of effort to improve how they were doing things as well. You know, they, they had figured out the timing a little bit more, what certain times the cards were selling better. They, they had separated into different sports. You could choose if you wanted to spend a little bit less money and put it up in the morning or a little bit more money and put it up in the evening or on a Friday. Like there was a lot of possibilities. There was a lot of choices where based on what you were learning from your experience, you could kind of aim yourself. Certain cards, I noticed certain cards would do better on Friday, but other cards would do fine anytime. Um, certain cards, I you know, I, I, I thought I could just put it on a, on a Monday morning, a Tuesday morning, more older cards, vintage cards, and that seemed to be perfectly fine. And a lot of other cards, you know, if I could put them up on a Friday evening, especially if it was a more hyped up player or big name, like that seemed to be the best time. So there was, there was a lot of variety that I could do. One thing I learned quickly is not to put any cards in what they called the mixers, because those mixers were just all over the place. You'd have a bunch of sports, a bunch of non-sports, a bunch of random stuff, kind of all mixed together. And as a seller, my cards never did particularly well in those, in those spaces, just because, you know, if, if somebody wants basketball cards, they go into a basketball auction. If somebody wants baseball cards, they go into baseball card auction. There's not that many people who are into all cards. You know, usually people have particular interest in a particular area in the hobby. Not that many people are into everything. So I never found the mixers to be a very good space. So I stopped submitting to those altogether. But then about maybe two months ago, something changed with the ComC auctions. And now all they have is mixers and you can't choose the time. And the interest from sellers has waned like crazy. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not making any money from it anymore. So I'm barely, barely using it. There's a few cards that I'll still every once in a while be like, okay, I think I can make a few bucks from this one, a few bucks from this one. So there's still a few times every once in a while while I'm submitting cards, but it's become much more rare. And I think that's the case for almost everyone. So when they first opened this, you know, I think it was, it was every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific, I believe, when they would open up the submissions. And it was like this 20 minute window where you just had to submit as many things as you could because there was a ton of people out there who were all also submitting as many things as they could. And you had this 20 minute window to get stuff uploaded. And so you really had to know in advance, like what was what were you gonna aim for on Friday? You should look in the schedule to know what days of the week are gonna be what sports and kind of prepare yourself. You know, I had it all, all my cards lined up during that week as I would buy cards to send onto the auction or, or prepare my own inventory to send onto the auction. I would kind of, I had like a, a, a method within my inventory inventory to, to price cards at a certain number that were all right next to each other, but not for sale. So I could just quickly boom, 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 do as many as I could to get them up into, into, the, into the auction. A lot of people I think were doing the same thing and this was going well. But now the submission window has changed. Now it's Friday, 1245, it opens and it's just one option. It's Mixer and it's Monday through Friday, you don't know what day your card is going to go there. It's random. You pay $2, so they've upped that price. It used to be $1.50 for the lower end stuff. Every once in a while, it's even cheaper than that. And then $2 for the for like the Fridays and stuff. Now it's $2, and you don't know when your card's going to sell. It could sell Monday morning at 8 o'clock. It could sell Friday afternoon at 7 p.m. When there's a lot of people on there, you just don't know. 
So that's part of it. And then every single auction is a mixer now. So I was telling you before that my mixers never did well before. Now that's the only thing that exists and I can't even choose the day anymore. And my card's sales have hurt significantly through this process. I think a lot of people are the same because I don't notice now they open up a new a new weekly mixer listing in Com C on Friday at 1245 with 1600 possible listings. And 30 minutes later, when in the past, every single listing would have filled up in 30 minutes, 30 minutes later, there's like five of those spots that have been taken. 10 of those spots that have been taken. There's still 1,585 cards left of 1,600 slots. Nobody's rushing to, to submit anymore because there's no reason to. And throughout the whole week, you know, until the next Friday when they, when they have the new submission, it's very unlikely all 1,600 of those spots will be filled up. It's because everybody's finding the same thing as me. Their cards are not doing very well anymore. Decent cards are slipping through the cracks all the time. The, the number of cards that, I, that I'm actually making a profit on has gone from 90% of the cards down to maybe like 20% of the cards. So I'm essentially barely using it anymore. You know, even even the way that I heard some sometimes like people, like when I do, I go into the live auction itself on occasion and listen. And even the way I've heard the host kind of talk about it is that this is a space where people are just trying to offload their inventory that, that's, that's just there. I've heard them say that, the hosts say that sort of thing a couple of times. And I think that's kind of the approach that people are taking at this point. They're just trying to offload inventory they don't want to have anything to do with. And a lot of times they're losing money in the process. So all that's to say, as a seller, I think the ComC live auctions on eBay have gotten not worth using. As a buyer, <laughs> this means there's a lot more opportunity if you have the patience to sit in those mixers because there's not that many people who are just in there regularly. I mean, over the course of the day, there'll be hundreds and hundreds of people in there, but at any given point, there's probably no more than 50 people in there. And because everything is a is a mixer of the 50 people who are in there, maybe 10 of them are interested in baseball, maybe 10 of them are interested in basketball, maybe 10 of them are interested in whatever, any sport, any non-sport, but you don't have that much demand for any particular card. So you can actually still get some phenomenally good deals as a buyer at times, if you know the market, if you don't have to go searching up comps for every single card and you can kind of just know generally where that card is going to be or where it should be right around and can and can bid accordingly for a certain percentage of comps and stuff you can actually get some great deals in that space but you have to have a lot of patience and I don't have the patience for that very frequently there was a period of time where I would just kind of have it on in the background as I was doing my work but I would just notice card after card after card after card would go through and I would have no interest in any of them and I would lose interest in it completely. And this is from, from somebody, like I'm mostly interested as a buyer in basketball, but in, in the mixer space, because there'll be so many cards in a row of things that aren't that interesting to me, eventually I lose patience and, and disappear. And I think that's happening to a lot of people, which is why if you have the patience and the time and you don't mind having it in the background or something, it's actually some really good opportunity for, for buying. If that sounds like you, I would recommend on going, not as a a seller but as a buyer going into eBay's live auctions one of the updates too is if at first when eBay started this you could only do it on your phone which was kind of annoying to me because a lot of times I'm doing my work on my computer I just want to open up another tab and have it in the background on my computer and then and now I can do that you couldn't do that for a long time you had to have it on the on the phone I still love ComC I'm still using ComC regularly but this live auction space is just something I've gotten to become quite frustrated with there's also so many times I, even right now in my account I have cards that sold on eBay live auctions for 40 bucks. I had one that sold for 40 bucks that has not been paid for yet. I have a bunch of other cards that haven't been paid for yet. And you know, I don't get my submission feedback. So if I pay $2, it bids up, somebody buys it for $40, but they don't pay it. I still have lost that $2. If I want to submit it up again, I have to pay that $2 again. So I've had to resubmit cards a lot in order to, in order to, you know, for, for people who are non-payers. Um, so that's just another frustrating thing. You know, there's a, there's more non-payers in these live auction spaces than in other spaces. I think because sometimes people, they, they buy the card and then they go and look it up later and they're like, whoa, I really overpaid for that. I'm not going to pay. I think that happens more in live auction spaces. And I think ComC should have some sort of protection in there for, I don't know if it's asking the seller if you want to, if you want to just put this right back up on another live auction so you don't have to pay that $2 again or, or what it is, or if you refund the $2, if, you know, if there's a non-payer type of thing, but it's kind of an annoyance. It's a, it's an annoyance that also keeps me from, from putting cards up on there sometimes too, because I think, you know, 
I made enough money from these ComC live auctions in the first few months to kind of make up for the loss that's happened in the last few months. But all in all, I've probably really just broken even over time and anything from here forward, if I continued using it regularly, I, I know it would just be losses. I wouldn't be making any money from it anymore. So, c'est la vie, as they say. I don't know who says that, but I just said it. So, it's just the way things go. You know, different marketplaces have their ebbs and flows. But I also question when I see things like the history of things like this, when there's new marketplaces that open up, how it can kind of have this influx for a period of time before it slows down. I kind of worry about that with places like the Fanatics Marketplace or some of these other places where it seems like there is a growing, um, the, the market seems to be growing and the prices are going up in certain spaces, but I do worry, like, is it sustainable or is it because of some sort of new hyped up marketplace that's eventually gonna settle down into something that's that's more like long term, like what it's gonna look like. So I, I don't know about some of these other, these other spaces, but this is what I've noticed in this space. Uh, anyway, I hope this was an interesting video. I will see you in the next one. Peace.